Hi, this is Thomas Ferreira. I'm an attorney and mediator in Carlsbad, California, and today's blog is the first in a five-part series, the five things that you absolutely must do to succeed in court. Uh, now, this series assumes that you have already done your responsive uh, declarations, or you've done your request for order, or you've done all the written paperwork and presented all of the documentary evidence that you need to present. Uh, this is really about how to persuade the judge once you're in court. Uh, there are certain do's and don'ts. There are There is a certain secret sauce and when you see attorneys doing this you see how to do it well. But the fact is it's like anything else. You can do it and you can do it well and I'm going to teach you how to do that. Now, the first thing that you want to do, whether you have an attorney or not, is prepare for the hearing. Read through your declarations. Read through the evidence. Look at the photos and other things that you have uh, placed in evidence and tease out those things that support what you want. What you want to do is work backwards from the result you want to the facts and be proactive. Uh, being proactive means that you ask for what you want and you don't react to what the other side is doing. They're going to ask for what they want. Don't worry about them. They're crazy anyway. So uh, write down the three major points. Uh, I want to talk about getting more time with my kids. I want more time with the parenting plan. I want to reduce my support payment uh, and I want to perhaps have unsupervised visits. That's an, another thing. Uh, so you write out these three things and then you write out the child-focused facts from your, your written presentation uh, as to how to get there. Uh, so when you appear in court, you're ready. If you're nervous about speaking, it's okay to write out your remarks you know, if you're unrepresented. Uh, but if you are represented, your attorney is going to do most of the talking. But nevertheless, you want to be prepared to talk about these issues should the court have any questions. And you want to be proactive in your presentation. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you want more time. Well, one thing you could do is say, yeah, she never lets me see the kids and she's this and she's that and gall darn it it's just not fair uh, by the way it's not fair is almost never a good argument in family court just to let you know uh, a better way to approach that is through the eyes of the child your honor this child has a warm tight relationship with me and it's clear that he misses me and it's really important to him as he gets older that he have a father in his life. Now, I know this court you know, has awarded uh, supervised visits. So what I'm asking this court to do is to remove that supervision because it taints the interaction that I have with the child. It makes everything more difficult. And... Uh, your Honor, I have done my anger management class. I have entered a 12-step program. I have done this, 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 and this that the court wanted me to do. And I've been doing this supervised visit for three months. And it is now time, I believe, to have unsupervised visits with the kids. You see, that's a more persuasive argument than mom is alienating them and she's withholding them and she's always nasty and, 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 and so forth. You want to make your arguments in a positive way so that the court is influenced, that you have the right things. Essentially, the court wants to see that you get it. And getting it means seeing the case the way the court sees it through the eyes of the child, through the problems that the court is trying to solve, such as support. Uh, so next time, I'm going to talk about how to be proactive and not to be 
reactive once you get in court. Until then, this is Thomas Ferreira, uh, divorce mediator and, uh, and attorney, and I hope that you found this helpful.